Hey, welcome back to HSN's video podcast, where we do our best to help you, the student, to keep moving your faith forward. All right, if you've been tracking with us, you know that we are deep into our series, Living in a Godless World. What is a Christian supposed to do? And in this series, we're diving into Daniel and we're pulling out some great stuff, learning a few things from four historical characters. Yeah, you know who they are. We got Daniel, we got Shadrach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the question that we're asking is, what did these four guys had that we need in our current Babylon? Yeah, that's right. Our world today is so much like the Babylon that these guys found themselves in. A world that was not for their God, a world that was against their God, a world that didn't even know their God. But yet in that culture, they were able to stand firm in their faith. And so we've been asking, what made them able to do what they did? And is there some things that we can learn from them as we continue to do our best to be followers of Jesus here today in our world, in our school, in our family, in our churches, in our communities in 2022? What do we need to learn? So as we dove into this series, we talked about way back in week one, we said that these guys, they predetermined what they were and were not going to do. And we said that is so important. We got to have this mindset when we go into our world, I'm not going to be doing and saying and acting in certain ways. And that was so critical. As we also continue to look at these guys, they also knew something. They also had, they also knew who they were. They had a firm grip on their identity as children of God. And we said in episode two that you and I, we also need to understand who we are in Christ. It's so important. And then we talked about that they were also willing to step up and lead. They're willing to step up even if they were the only ones. They were not going to bow down. They were not going to compromise. They were going to stand true to what they believe. And they were willing to be the example. They were willing to be the leaders that they needed to be in that moment. And I also said to you guys in this series that you and I, we got the same choice. We can either blend in and be like everyone else, or we can step up and follow Jesus and be the leaders that we are called to be for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I said, we can do all things because of a key verse that we've been saying week after week. And that is Philippians chapter two, verse 13. Do you know it? Oh, I hope so. Let me remind you. It says, for God is working in you, giving you the power and the desire to do what pleases him. And at the end of the day, that's what we want to realize. God's in us and he is giving us the power, not only the power, but the desire to do what pleases him. And what pleases him is when you and I stop compromising, when we predetermine what we are not going to do. We're going to live for God. We're going to lean into our identity and we're going to lead our generation. All right. So let's pick up where we left off last week because the three guys are standing in front of an angry king. Remember, they were called to this big conference. At the end of this conference, this big, the big finale was that the band was going to play. And then all of a sudden at a certain time, at a certain moment, everyone was going to bow down to this big idol, right? That represented Babylon. But these three guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, we're not bowing. We're not doing that. Why? Because they knew the commandments and the commandment says, worship only the Lord, their God. And they were not going to bow down to some fake idol. They weren't going to do it. So they predetermined what they were not going to do. And they leaned into who they were and they decided to lead. And they were the only three standing. And so now the king is furious with them. And the king says, I'm going to give you one more chance. And if you don't bow down, I'm going to throw you into a furnace. Yes, a furnace of fire. He says, I'm going to have you executed by burning you to death. What a horrible way to go. go. But look what these guys did. And we said this last time, their response to the king. The king says, I'm going to give you another chance. I'm, you know, you, you better listen to me or else. But look what they said in verse 
16 of Daniel chapter 3. They said this, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. I love that statement. But here's my question for you. What would have you have done? I want you to think of that for a moment. Okay, I want you to be really, really real. You see, the problem is you and I, we have the Bible and we have the historical historical context and we know the end of the story. We know what's going to happen. But you and I need to remind ourselves that, that these were real people in a real time, in a real place in history, in a real moment and with real life and death on the line. They live this moment by moment. They couldn't pull out their Bible, okay, and go and flip a few pages and go, oh, yeah, don't worry about it. We're going to be okay. No, they lived it every moment. And yet they still chose to do what they did. But what about you and I? Because I feel that God is telling me today to tell you or to remind you that so many of you, you've been in this situation time and time again where you had the opportunity to stand for God, to stand for your faith, to lean in and be a leader for your generation. But as soon as you felt the heat, you bowed down. As soon as you got a little bit uncomfortable, you gave in. So as soon as, as soon as that moment came, that little bit of persecution, you're like, I can't do this. And you cave. Why? Why do we choose to bow down to Babylon as soon as we feel the heat? Look what the Apostle Paul said right into the New Testament. And he was talking to Timothy and he was trying to encourage him. And in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10, he says to Timothy, he says, Timothy, certainly know, know what I teach. You know how I live and what my purpose in life is. And you know my faith and my patience, my love and my endurance. And then he says this, you know how much persecution and suffering I have endured. And you know all about how I was persecuted. And he goes down through all these places and situations where he felt the heat and he didn't back down. And then he makes this, and then he makes this, this, this point. He says in verse 12, yes, and everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ will suffer persecution. Now, you and I, we don't like that. We like the easy life, but you and I need to know that in our Babylon, when we take a stand for what is true and honorable and right, according to the word of God, we are going to feel the heat of persecution. And when that time comes, we need to make a choice. Are we gonna lean into it? Or are we gonna chicken out and bow down to everyone else's standards? So what made these guys so brave? Why were they willing to take a stand? What did they know about God that we need to understand? Look at their words again in verse 16. They say to the king, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. In other words, you can forget it. We are not bowing down. You can reset the stage and give us as many opportunities as you want, but we have predetermined that we know who we are as children of God and we are not bowing down to your idol. This is a powerful and bold statement. And this statement, it comes from a life that is consistently predetermined that is not going to compromise. See, this isn't the only time these guys had to stand for their faith. You gotta realize they've been in Babylon for a while, living their faith out loud, leaning into their positions of authority, leaning into the culture of Babylon, but not compromising. Day in and day out, standing strong in their faith. And so this decision just came from a lifestyle of making decisions that constantly honored God. And it's a bold statement. They are standing in their identity. But here's the next part I want you to see and understand. They trusted God that he is faithful. Did you catch that? See, they trusted that God is faithful and they knew that God is the one who will answer for them. God is the one who will defend them. And they maintained their identity in him because of that. And they didn't feel the pressure to follow the mandates of Babylon. They had the courage and the strength to step out in faith, be different, and not conform. Why? Because they trusted God. 
And look what happened. I want to read this to you because this is such an incredible part of the historical story. Check it out. So right in verse 19, it says that King Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face became distorted with rage. And he commanded that the furnace be heated seven times other than usual. And then he ordered some of the strongest men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So they tied them up and threw them into the furnace, fully dressed in their pants and turbans and robes and other garments. And because the king, in his anger, had demanded such a hot fire in the furnace, the flames killed the soldiers as they threw the three men in. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, securely tied, fell into the roaring flames. And as in that moment, everyone thought the story ended. In that moment, I bet you Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego also thought, this is it, it's over. But look what happened. Verse 24, but suddenly, Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and explained to and exclaimed to his advisors, whoa, 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 hold on a second. Didn't we just tie up three men and throw them into the furnace? Yes, your majesty, we certainly did. Like, yeah, we threw them in. It was, it was a pretty tense moment. And then King Nebuchadnezzar says, look, I see four men on bound and walking around in the fire on harm and the fourth one he looks like a god and then king king nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door to flaming furnace and he shouted shadrach meshach and abednego servants of the most high god come out come here so shadrach meshach and abednego stepped out of the fire can you imagine what people were like like completely shocked and awe okay like this this is not how it's supposed to be like we have never seen anything like this before and it says that the high officers and officials and governors and advisors crowded around them you know touching them poking them are you for real and they saw that the fire had not touched them not a hair on their head was singed and her clothing was not scorched and they didn't even smell like smoke. What? Okay, unbelievable. Now, some of you skeptics out there are going, no, 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 that's impossible. That would never happen. That that defies the laws of things that go into fires, you know? But this is how good God is, okay? Because here's the truth. If you don't 100 percent trust god you will never lean in and go through the top stuff you will you will never see jesus working in your life and you and you you need to get this you need to learn to trust god no matter what no matter what because look at what god did not do for daniel and them okay God didn't, God didn't show up in the fire as they are going to be thrown in and yell out to the guys, it's okay, it's going to be all right, don't worry about it, come on in, it's going to be fine. No, neither did God show up right at the, right, you know, right at the beginning and said, I got you. No, he waited until they were in the flames, in the heat of it, in the, in the intensity of it. And then he showed up and he rescued them. But you and I, we don't want God like that, do we? See, we want to we want to know the very moment that we make a choice to stand up for him that everything's going to be fine. We don't want to feel the heat. We don't want to feel the persecution. We just want to know that that we're going to be okay. And I want to let you know that sometimes you have to embrace the heat and trust God and go through it. And this is what the boys did. They understood that God is able and they trusted him. Even if it meant their death, they still believe. But I want to go back a couple verses. Check this part out, right? It says right here, if you go back to verse 17, this is what the boy said. And he said to the king, we don't need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But check out verse 18. 
It says, but even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we'll never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. Did you catch that? They said, listen, we believe that God can rescue us and God can get us through this. But if God chooses not to, even if even if this is the end for us, we will never bow down. Now that's courage. Now that's faith. Now that's trust in God. Question for you. Do you trust God at this level? Do you? Do you trust God to take care of you even when the heat is on? Because see, it's all about that confidence in God. It comes down to, do you trust God? Do you believe that he is good? And we're going to talk more about that statement in the next episode. Is God good? Can I trust him 100%? And we're going to dive into Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, because I believe that we just need to take a small pause right here. And we just need to ask ourselves, do I trust God at this level? Because if I did, then I would be doing more for him. I would be living more confidently in him in my Babylon. You see, the boys made a choice to be thrown in. And because they did, they gave God a huge opportunity to strengthen their faith and to show the world at that time that their God is the one true God and he is a God worth following. But we're going to talk more about that as we go through the series. But this is what I want you to get today. When you and I, when we back down, when he is on, we miss out on what God is trying to do in our lives. I get it. It's tough in Babylon. It's tough to stand up and acknowledge or let the world know that you are a follower of Jesus. And I get it. The world out there isn't friendly sometimes. And sometimes it can be downright mean to what we believe. But we need to make a choice that we're not going to bow down to Babylon. And when we do, we will see God strengthen our faith like never before. But it's going to mean that you're going to have to go through some tough stuff, trusting God along the way. Listen, at the end of this, do you think Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego doubted God? No, I don't think so. I think more than anything, this strengthened their faith. And this is what God wants to do in your life as well. As you go through your Babylon, as you predetermine you're not going to bow, that you stand for who you are as a child of God, and you step up and you're willing to lead, I promise you, God got your back because he loves you and he's going to get you through it. Because that's the type of God that we serve. Can I pray for you? Cool. Hey God, I just want to say thank you so much for your goodness. That God, you are a good God. And yeah, sometimes, you know, as we live our faith out loud, it's tough and it's hard and it's difficult and the heat is on and everything inside of us wants us to, you know, give up and quit. But if we give up and quit, then we'll never grow in our faith. We'll never get through the tough stuff. We'll never fully understand what you can do in us and through us. So Lord, for any student right now or anyone who's listening today, and they're going through some tough stuff. God, I pray that they will not give up on you, but they'll lean extra hard upon you, trusting in you, knowing that you got their back. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, there you have it. Part five of our series. Only a few more parts to go. Hope you're enjoying it. But until next time, be good, stay safe, and keep living God out loud. Later. Later.